How's it going? I'm Riley Carl with Dark Arrow, back again to talk about the tools we're using to build the Dark Arrow 1. And today's video is going to be about CAD tools. Now, if you follow us on social media, you've probably seen some of our posts that mention the term CAD or computer-aided design. And we throw the term CAD around a bit loosely, but what we really mean when we say CAD is 3D modeling software. I've been thinking about making a CAD video for a while now because I think it's a very important topic on an important set of tools. So important that I would say that they form the very foundation of our company. The problem is CAD is actually a pretty broad and complicated topic and I've had a really hard time figuring out how can I put this into a short and simple video and I've come to the realization that I can't really do that. But what I can do is put it in several videos and so that's what I'm going to do. So this video will be the first of several talking about the software tools we use to design and build the Dark Arrow 1. So let's get right into it. We use CAD software to build virtual 3D models of the entire Dark Arrow 1 before we actually build the aircraft. They look like this. I think it's important to immediately discuss why we go through the effort to build these models because it's not a trivial task to do this. For us there are three big reasons which are to improve our manufacturing, for design validation, and for quality of our build instructions for our customers. Let's talk about that first big reason, the manufacturing. Basically all modern aircraft are designed in CAD. If you go to Boeing, Lockheed, or Airbus, they're doing everything in CAD. Traditionally these CAD tools were only accessible to larger companies like these aerospace giants, and they weren't commonly seen as much in home-built aircraft, especially the composite ones. If you look at the vast majority of composite kit aircraft either flying today or on the market today, and they were not designed in CAD. Now, I'm not trying to bash these kit aircraft by pointing this out. A lot of them were designed decades ago before these tools were as accessible as they are today. So at the time, it was good enough to use things like simple 2D drawings or hand-shaped molds or no molds at all. These approaches certainly worked in the past, but going forward for us, there are limitations to how good of a kit aircraft we can produce without incorporating computer-aided design and manufacturing tools. One of the biggest limitations of not using CAD is the dimensional accuracy of your final parts. Anyone who spent any time building a composite kit aircraft or any kit aircraft that has any amount of composite material in it will tell you about the hundreds if not thousands of hours spent trying to get these parts to fit up and then filling them and sanding them to try to get the desired surface finish before you paint the parts. All of this body filler adds weight to the airframe and all the effort sanding it adds more time to the build and we are trying to get away from that. This picture of me sanding my life away is an extreme example, but the general principle still applies to a lot of composite kit aircraft. If you can make a good 3D model of your airplane, then you can use that model as input from modern computer controlled manufacturing tools like CNC machines that you can use to build the airplane parts and the molds. These tools can make parts at least 10 times more accurate than the most skilled home builder could craft by hand. This is the way that kit aircraft should be built today. Modern CAD tools allow us to ultimately build more dimensionally accurate parts, which means lighter parts. And lighter parts means a lighter aircraft, which means a better performing aircraft. The second reason I mentioned earlier for why we use CAD tools is design validation. Modern CAD tools have the capability to run different types of simulation on your design. For us, this is primarily aerodynamic simulation and structural simulation. If you have the capability to structurally load and break a part of the airplane in the virtual world, it's much quicker and cheaper than breaking the real thing. Now I have to make the disclaimer that these simulation tools are absolutely not a replacement for doing actual physical testing in the real world. If you follow us closely, you know we are no strangers to doing all sorts of structural tests on everything from small test samples all the way up to full structures. This is incredibly important to do, especially with composite materials. Virtual simulation is also not a replacement for fundamental engineering calculations. The way we use these simulation tools is to get a more fine-grained detail on things we've already calculated with a fundamental engineering analysis. The last reason I mentioned earlier for using CAD tools was the quality of our build instructions. Having a good 3D model of the Dark Arrow 1 allows us to build more clear and detailed build instructions that we otherwise could without it. So there you go. That's a high-level story of what CAD is and a little bit of the motivation behind why we chose to incorporate CAD into our arsenal of tools. I hope everything made sense. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And I think next week we'll start to talk about the actual software tools we are using for CAD. So I will see you then.